Good morning, You Can Heal family. Welcome back to another reading of the Bible today. My name's Sheena, and hey, let me slash her. Hold on. We're in 2 Kings chapter 17 today. So let's see what the Lord is going to show us. Um, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Spiritual Evaluation of Hoshea. Hoshea, son of Elah, began to rule over Israel in the 12th year of King Hazar's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria nine years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, but not as much as the kings of Israel who ruled before him. Imprisonment of Hoshea. King Shalmanazar of Assyria attacked and defeated King Hoshea. So Israel was forced to pay heavy annual tribute to Assyria. Then Hoshea conspired against the king of Assyria by asking king by asking king So of Egypt to help him shake free of Assyria's power and by refusing to pay the annual tribute to Assyria. When the king of Assyria discovered this treachery, he arrested him and put him in imprisonment for his rebellion. Captivity of Samaria, verse 5. Then the king of Assyria invaded the entire land, and for three years he besieged Samaria. Finally, in the ninth year of King Hoshea's reign, Samaria fell, and the people of Israel were exiled to Assyria. They were settled in colonies in Hala along the banks of the Hebor River in Gozan and among the cities of the Medes. Causes of Captivity this disaster came upon the nation of Israel because the people worshipped other gods, sinning against the Lord their God, who had brought them safely out of their slavery in Egypt. They had imitated the practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land before them, as well as the practices the kings of Israel had introduced. The people of Israel had also secretly done many things that were not pleasing to their Lord their God. They built pagan shrines for themselves in all their towns, from the smallest outpost to the largest walled city. They set up sacred pillars and Asherah poles at the top of every hill and under every green tree. They burned incense at the shrines, just like the nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of them. So the people of Israel had done many evil things, arousing the Lord's anger. Yes, they worshipped idols, despite the Lord's specific and repeated warnings. How many times has God warned you about something and you just haven't taken heed to it? Verse 13, again and again, the Lord had sent his prophets and seers to warn both Israel and Judah. Turn from all your evil ways, obey my commands and laws, which are contained in the whole law that I commanded your ancestors and which I gave you through my servants, the prophets. But the Israelites would not listen. They were as stubborn as their ancestors and refused to believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his laws and the covenant he made with their ancestors, and they despised all his warnings. They worshipped worthless idols and became worthless themselves. Oh, wow. Was that a lesson? You worship worthless things, you become worthless yourself. They followed the example of the nations around them, disobeying the Lord's command not to imitate them. They defied all the commands the Lord their God had made. Hold on. They defied all the commands of the Lord their God and made two calves from metal. They, def oh God. they set up an Asherah pole and worshiped Baal and all the forces of heaven. They even sacrificed their own sons and daughters in the fire, and they consulted fortune tellers and used sorcery and sold themselves to evil, arousing the Lord's anger. And because the Lord was angry, he swept them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah remained in the land. But even the people of Judah refused to obey the commands of the Lord their God. They walked down the same evil paths that Israel had established. So the Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel. He punished them by handing them over to their attackers until they were destroyed. For when the Lord tore Israel away from the kingdom of David, they chose Jeroboam, son of Nebat, as their king. Then Jeroboam drew Israel away from following the Lord and made them commit a great sin. 
And the people of Israel persisted in all the evil way of Jeroboam. They did not turn from these sins of idolatry until the Lord finally swept them away, just as all his prophets had warned would happen. So Israel was carried off to the land of Assyria, where they remain to this day. Grab some water. Excuse me. Call for God. Drink your water today. Sins of foreigners, verse 24. And the king of Assyria transported groups of people from Babylon, Kutha, Hava, Hamath, and Zepharvam, <laughs> and re and resettling them in the towns of Samaria, replacing the people of Israel. So the Assyrians took over Samaria and the other towns of Israel. But since these foreign settlers did not worship the Lord when they first arrived, the Lord sent lions among them to kill some of them. So a message was sent to the king of Assyria. Oh, I needed a breath there. The people whom you have resettled in the towns of Israel do not know how to worship the God of the land. He has sent lions among them to destroy them because they have not worshipped him correctly. The king of Assyria then commanded, send one of the exiled priests from Samaria back to Israel. Let him teach the new residents the religious customs of the God of the land. So one of the priests who had been exiled from Samaria returned to Bethel and taught the new residents how to worship the Lord. Valley, what are you doing? I just had to make Oh, okay. But these various groups of foreigners also continued to worship their own gods. In town after town where they lived, they placed their idols at the pagan shrines that the people of Israel had built. Those from Babylon worshipped idols of their god Sukkot Benot. Those from Kuath worshipped their god Nergal. And those from Hamath worshipped Ashima. The Avites worshipped their gods Nimhaz and Tartak. And the people from Sepharvam even burned their own children as sacrifices to Adramalek and Anamalek. Oh, God. Verse 32. These new residents worshipped the Lord, but they appointed from among themselves priests to offer sacrifices at the pagan shrines. And though they worshipped the Lord, they continued to follow the religious customs of the nations from which they came. And this is still going on among them today. They follow their former practices instead of truly worshiping the Lord and obeying the laws, regulations, instructions, and commands he gave the descendants of Jacob, whose name he changed to Israel. The Lord had made a covenant with the descendants of Jacob and commanded them, do not worship any other gods or bow before them or serve them or offer sacrifices to them. Worship only the Lord who brought you out of Egypt with such mighty miracles and power. I know you'd think that all the Lord did for them, they wouldn't even want to be tempted by worshiping idols. You must worship him and bow before him, offer sacrifices to him alone. Be careful to obey all the laws, regulations, instructions and commands that he wrote for you. You must not worship any other gods. Do not forget the covenant I made with you and do not worship other gods. You must worship only the Lord your God. He is the one who will rescue you from all your enemies. But the people would not listen and continued to follow their old ways. So while these new residents worship the Lord, they also worship their idols. And to this day, their descendants do the same. That's such a shame. Like we have to really decide, you can heal family, who we're gonna serve, you know? Who is it we really want to follow after? And and it just reminds me of the Romans verse, you know, like renewing our mind. They these people did not want to change the way <laughs> they were thinking. And and I think that's what we have to do because when we're stuck in old habits for so long, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to to come out of those habits, but we have to practice new behavior, new ways of thinking, you know, and talking out loud to ourselves, you know, and saying things like, I am capable of changing, you know, I am able to, to do things the Lord's way and have that desire in your heart to serve him. Because I'm telling you, this chapter, they're just not getting the lesson. People are doing awful things and dying left and right here. So 
Let's commit to serve the Lord today and to put him first. Um, that's the end of the chapter. We'll be back tomorrow with um, chapter 18. Always remember, true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Bye. Love ya. Thank you.